Welcome back. Once again, adventurers, to Let's Play Chaos Child. In the last episode, the Takuru tried to take on Wataru Sakuma and almost succeeded in uh, using his power of psychokinesis to uh, almost, but not quite, uh, destroy the device uh, that Sakuma was wearing on his back, some kind of terminal. Unfortunately, at the 11th hour, Sakuma recovered and essentially threw Takuru's mind into a pseudo time loop in the form of the last memory of Nono Kurusu's life. Basically, uh, yeah, the moment where she was killed by Sarika Onoe on the roof of Hekio Academy. And, uh, yeah, after the fourth time, Takuru's mind was definitely uh, on the verge of breaking apart. And to add insult to injury, uh, Sakuma's delusion made it look like Kurusu was actually blaming Takuru for failing to come to a raid, for failing to save Yui, for failing to uh, stay away from the case when she'd uh, asked him all those months ago. But, broken as he was, Takuru hadn't completely snapped, which tragically uh, irritated Sakuma to no end, so instead of uh, throwing him th through a pr proverbial time loop, Sakuma has just thrown Takuru headfirst into what is basically a non, yeah, a non-existent purgatory, I suppose, where basically uh, Takuru, for lack of a better term, is the proverbial Cheshire, no, what am I talking about, not the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland, Schrodinger's cat from the Quantum Theorem. He is neither here nor there, he is everywhere, and he is nowhere. He is observed, and yet he is not observed. And, uh... Originally he thought that, uh... Hmm, this existence might not be so bad, but... Unfortunately, as, uh... Yeah, Sakuma pointed out, spending a month in this state is probably uh, not going to do wonders for Takuru's psyche. I tried my best to find it, something solid. But there is no matter in this void of non-existence. All Takuru is uh, in this realm is nothing more than a silent name and a silent voice. Suddenly, I realized, where was I? What was I doing here? You were nothing more now than simply a disembodied consciousness. No, no. This was more than mind control. This darkness was another hallucination. I tried to scream and wave my arms, but, uh, you have neither voice nor form. All you will have is your, uh, disembodied thoughts, I guess. But there was no sound and no movement. If I couldn't move, I at least wanted to feel something with one of my senses. It could be a bright light, screaming, even pain. Exactly the sort of things that you tried to run away from uh, previously. An awful bitter taste or even a horrible smell. If I didn't find something fast, I'd lose track of where I ended and the darkness began. I know. What about my shoulder injury from when Sakuma knocked me into the seats? I desperately tried to feel the pain in my shoulder. But it didn't work. It did not work. I couldn't feel anything. 
even whether or not it was bleeding. It felt like the darkness was gradually burying me, like ants swarming on a piece of candy. The boundary line between my own body and the rest of the world got even blurrier. No way. I finally remembered a certain piece of information. Yeah, Sakuma did give a name of sorts. I remember what Sakuma said just before this happened. Woodburn Heron, wasn't it? Oh yes it was. I matched the name with what was going on. That was a famous experiment, if I remembered right. Heron Sensory Deprivation Experiment. He would put subjects in a sound-treated room that was completely silent, then blindfold them so they couldn't see, then tie them up with a straitjacket kept at exactly their body temperature to take away their sense of touch. Except for eating simple meals and defecating, they were kept on a bed at all times. The experiment he'd done was to see how long they could last. The results have been far less than what he'd expected. I suppose to the test subjects, it might have felt like days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries. Probably even millennia or even an eternity. However, the most any of them could endure was two to three days, so none of them even made it to a week, much less a month. The worst ones would complain of disturbed thinking after only a few hours. If they continued with the experiment anyway, they would start hearing and seeing things and almost go mad. A human being can't endure long periods of time with no stress or stimulation. The experiment was banned now because of its dangerousness. I remembered something else, something terrifying. What did Sakuma said? See you in a month. I was supposed to spend a month like this. I screamed. But I could not hear my voice. Silence. Well, unless you can somehow break free of the uh, delusionary hold, we're pretty much stuck like this. Nothing more than emptiness and a void. We don't even get a bed. The first change was to my sense of vision. It was after about two days had passed by my reckoning. It would have been about dinner time. Yeah. To put it into perspective, we are pretty much, uh... Hmm. Kind of like, uh... Alucard at the end of Helsing Ultimate, where it was trapped inside himself. Except, uh, we have no uh, other in external thoughts or souls with which to interact with. We are alone in this reality, quote unquote. I wasn't sleepy or hungry. At some point, I just began to count numbers. One second two seconds. It was meaningless, but I felt like I'd go mad if I didn't do something. When I just about passed a hundred thousand seconds, the darkness in front of me suddenly began to shine. What? Who's there? It wasn't a camera flash or a light bulb. It was just a blurry glow. That was all. I couldn't see anything else or even move. When I saw it, I lost track of my number and started over. Well, that sucks. The light came every 100,000 seconds. A day was... 
60 times 60 times 24 so 86,400 seconds well short of uh, 100,000 obviously but then again given the fact that we're trapped in a delusion what feels like uh, days, weeks, months, eternity could really only be less than less than a week. Perfect. I decided to round up and call each 100,000 seconds a day. When there was no light, I was bored. I wished so many times for something to happen. Someone, come here. Even Sakuma, I didn't care. I'd rather be fighting a battle with the D-Swords that I knew I couldn't win. Even though, once again, when you were actually in that battle, you were wishing the exact opposite. No, actually, I'd rather be stabbed with a D-Sword. I wanted to feel pain. I thought that was when the light came back for the... Th Sorry, I thought that when the light came back for the 30th time I could escape. I can only hope because that would mean a month had passed. A month was 30 days. But nothing happened. The light just kept coming back at the same pace as before. When the light came again after 30 days passed, I stopped counting how many times it had come. I'd stopped counting to 100,000 too. What's the point of counting anyway? Yeah, if uh, Sakuma wanted Takuru's sanity to unravel, he probably should have done this right from the very start. Finally, a voice. Which uh, begs the question. Yeah, something that I didn't bring up in the previous episode. That hallucination between... Seriko Noe and Nono Kurusu on top of the roof of Hekyo Academy. That wasn't just simply a hallucination. It was a hallucination based on a memory. And since, uh, yeah. And since Nono Kurusu is dead, there can only be one candidate. Even if, uh, she was motionless on the uh, on the stage this whole time because her previous death was also a hallucination caused by Sakuma's little device. Nono? I heard that clearly. I'd started hearing voices sometime when I neared the 30th appearance of the light. Actually, I might have been wrong. I just, are you just going to die like this? What's Miyashita Park like? Hey Miyashiro, do you know, how do you know again? Adios, gracias. And more and more. So that was uh, Kurusu's voice, he was hallucinating, not Serika's. Okay, so I was wrong. And the madness continues. And I'm not actually going to read this because it adds to the, uh, well, I'll read everything that, that, well, I won't read anything that isn't being narrated by uh, Tukuru at this point because that just adds to the atmosphere and the ambience. The voices came and disappeared without listening to my responses. I at least wanted to see their faces, but it is darkness. I was already starting to forget what everyone looked like. Maybe if I saw them again, I could s stop the darkness from swallowing up all my memories. Really? More voices. 
Really, you'll do that for me. Wait. And there's a voice that shouldn't be here. No, um... That's not true. Of course I'm not lonely. No, I wanted to tell you to be careful. Sakuma's power is... What was it again? どうしたな。サクマはどこにいるんだよ。それがわかんねえと殺しに行けねえだろ。さっさと言え。時間の無駄だ。That's strange. He should be right there. There. Where's there? Yeah, and once again, Takuru has lost all sense of dimensionality because, of course, he has. If by some mir miracle uh, we manage to get others, we're going to erase Woodburn Heron from our memory. How do you know I'm a right sider? Of course I know. We're in it. We're in Woodburn's... Well, Woodburn Heron is actually the name of the person, not the actual experiment, but I digress. He's the guy who came up... Yeah. The guy who came up with the theory that a day is 86,400 seconds. Amazing, right? No applause whatsoever. I was slowly breaking and melting away. Then a light. Suddenly I felt something stabbing me somewhere. It was the pain I've been longing for, but I didn't care anymore. I was just tired of it. No, please don't stab me. I don't want to die. Because it hurts. Nano kept stabbing me, as if she were trying to find out where I was. When that sound finally stopped, I heard a wet slopping noise. I could tell where her hands were jammed inside my body, rummaging through my guts. I could imagine the blood. But Nono was right. I didn't feel any pain. That's strange. It hurt a moment ago. Nono, let me see you. I'm sorry. You can kill me if you want. Well... Because I want to see you. I want to see anybody. I'm lonely. Nano? Why? Why did you leave? No, wait. Was that really Nano? Was that Nano's voice? Did she really talk like that? Who knows? Hmm. Wait a second. What was Nano's last name? That orphanage. I was blanking out on the place's name. There were two sisters there. What were their names? Oh wait. Was it a brother and a sister? Everything was turning black. Yep, just like the Rolling Stones song. Everything is turning black. Who was that girl who always told me not to lie? Who was the one in the white lab coat? The one that didn't talk, the one who'd always seemed scared. Who'd been stabbing me a moment ago? So many questions. Shut up, shut up. 
Suddenly the noises started to bother me. I didn't want to be criticized with these people when I didn't even know their names. Oh, you know who they are. You've just completely forgotten them. Please, somebody... Somebody kill... Ow. I was surprised by a sudden fierce pain in my head. Thud, thud. I could feel the blood flowing into my head. How many months had it been since I felt pain so clearly like this? Oh, how many... How many years? Or maybe decades? Uh, again, probably less than a day. Probably hours at best. I said shut up. All of you shut up. I screamed back at the voices. I don't know who you people are. All of you just disappear. When I said someone's name, everyone, everything became better. All the voices disappeared, and all the pain in my head was gone. Toku? Toku? Daijoubu? And finally a proper voice. It's Seriko Noe, or at least the personality and persona that Takuru knew or thought that he'd known so well. She was right next to me, as if that were the no most natural place in the world for her to be. Well, considering... Considering the fact that she was originally your imaginary friend six years ago, that's not surprising. That was impossible. When Sakuma used his mind control on me, I'd killed her. I remembered. Sakuma had used his mind control on me. In the theater cube at the Hikariwo. So this was all just... Uh, the possibility is very likely in that. <laughs> Serica laughed. I didn't know why. Also been a long time since we heard that laugh. A very long time. De, no? Uh, it's pretty terrible. なかなかだよ。結構きつい。そう、結構居心地良さそうだけど、お腹も空かないんでしょ。うん、that mm, depends. Serica looked around into the empty void. Also known as Purgatory, I think. She was acting like she was just come over to check out a friend's new house. お前な、一度こうなってみろよ。体を動かせないのがどんなに辛いか。うう、そりゃ、私は耐えられそうにないけど。
That is true. あの、なんかこう、あそうとするたびにちゃんと痛みが走った。動いてなくても動かしてるっていう実感があったんだよ。うん、そういうもの。Sarah tilted her head at me. これ向こうはどうなってる向こう現実だよ。つまり、シアターキューブにいる僕だ。思考誘導を受けて、多分倒れてるだろう。I didn't even have the slightest idea how much time had passed. Could be a second, could be an eternity. But it had to have been much longer than a day or two. Ugh, maybe. The restoration festival was probably long since over. I might have starved to death. それはないんじゃないかな。だってタクちゃんと話してるし、生きてるってことでしょ。そうだけど。Technically speaking, 情報をまとめて理屈で考えろっていつも言ってるのはタクだよ。Yeah, that was always a shtick. こっちと向こうの時間が違うとか? Maybe. Ah, time dilation. That's right. It's possible. ひなちゃんたちはどうしたの? ひなちゃん? It's been a long time since Serika is called Arimura Hina-chan. Oh, right, Hinai. Hinai Arimura. How would I have forgotten about her? Shinjo san tachito isho ni Shibuya o nuke dashita to omoe. Yeah, they all made it out of Shibuya and uh, hopefully by uh, on their way to Akihabara about now. Tachi te dare dare? Eto, Uki chan to Yuto kun to? くのさとさん。あれれ、花ちゃんは？あいつは事件と直接関係ないから渋谷に残ってると思う。そっか。ねえ、yeah, Kazuki's still here. And then Serika started asking me one question after another. Could I really not move? Was the light I sometimes saw a hallucination? Were the voices I heard imaginary? I took a long time answering each one in as much detail as possible. I had plenty of time after all, as the proverbial sands pour through the hourglass, and just the act of having a conversation was wonderful. It was something I'd done all the time in my daily life and at the newspaper club. Come to think of it, who would first use the phrase, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, and when did they use it? I think I heard that in a song somewhere. Can't remember though, but it was quite catchy. <laughs> Maybe. Do they even have Pokecoms here in Purgatory? I laughed a little, though I wasn't sure if Serika was serious or joking. Each time I would answer one of her questions, Serika's expression would change. She'd laugh or get mad, and sometimes she'd even try to correct me. You know, all the things that she used to do before her true personality asserted itself. She really did seem like a normal person, but... Hmm? Nani? Hmm... Omae... Mekashi wa boku no mousou de... Doko ni mo ina katta nda na. Uuuu... Bare 
っちゃったか。You say that with that face. She acted just like a kid who had been caught while playing hide and seek. Hoka no hitokara wa do miete tanda. If she wasn't real, I must have spent all my time as a kid talking to empty air. Do te mita mamma da to mo ke do. Yeah, pretty much. Demo sa. I don't want to see Taku again. I don't want to see her again. Yeah, you done goofed when you said, uh, that, uh, yeah. If Serika had never mentioned that she was with Takuru, um, in the hospital when she wasn't, then Kurusu would never have, uh, well, I say that, then I remember the fact that Serika had brought her Gero Froggy with her to each of the crime scenes. And so she would if it weren't for that Gero Froggy. Yeah. You would never have been found out. That's right. Serika and I spent almost all of our time in my room. I've never been to her house. No, according to Kunisato, her house didn't exist. Although if he did, it would have helped uh, save Takaru's life. So what was your reason for keeping it from him, I wonder? She laughed, but she seemed a little bothered. Demo. あの時はどうだったんだ。お？渋谷地震。ああ。Yeah, the moment when she first materialized into reality. I remembered carrying Serika through the hell that was post-earthquake Shibuya. But if she'd only just been born when I'd had that headache, when I was in the Yoyogi shelter, I hadn't really been carrying her on my back at all. Only then did I remember why I was here. It wasn't to talk about old times. Hmm, I don't know, but I don't think it was a わたしは気をしなってたからあんまり話してないし。あんな状況じゃタクが独り言を言ってるとか歩いてる姿勢がおかしいとか別に誰もんタク。え？どうしたの？ Nothing, and yet everything is wrong. If I could have moved my body, I would have been look, looking back straight back into Serika's eyes. お前を生み出した時、僕はお前に何を望んだんだろう。Can She didn't seem surprised or upset at all. だって今の私はタコの知ってることしか知らないもん。向こうの彼女しか知らないことだもん。Yeah, that's right. The Sarah in front of me might look alive, but she was really just a delusion of mine. Basically, Serika that child Takuru used to dream up about all the time. 
so she wouldn't know anything that I didn't. I'd created her again to help me get through this torture. She was just... Oh. <laughs> and when I realized it, I was disgusted with myself. I felt so pathetic that I wanted to cry. How could I be so shameless? Even if it was a trap created by Sakuma's mind control, I'd still killed her with my own hands. She'd almost killed me, and then I lost control and killed her instead. I torn open her stomach injury, then strangled her. Saying I'd been mind controlled was just an excuse. The rage and desire to kill I'd felt had been real. Even without the mind control, if the same thing had happened in reality, I'd do it again. I'd kill her. Even when the imaginary me tried to kill her, she'd chosen to die rather than resist, unlike me. Yeah, that she did, but... But then I'd wish for her again, just like I'd done during the Shibuya earthquake. And I'd come to her for help again. I couldn't handle the darkness on my own, so I'd created her. I could m not imagine a worse person than myself. Enough. Stop it. Don't tell me exactly what I want to hear. Come to think of it, Sarah could have always been like that ever since I was little. Even when I was neglected, she was always jealous of me. She always made me think that I was better off than she was. Because that's exactly how your thoughts uh, shaped her, uh, the idea of Sarah Konoe. Projecting yourself onto some other, uh, onto a delusionary construct. Whenever I'd wanted to show off some new piece of information I'd learned, she'd always act interested. She pretended to be a stupid girl, so that I'd always get to think of myself as a right-sider. Sarah could look hurt when she saw me apologize. Why don't you understand? You don't have to apologize. This is what makes me happy, she seemed to say. But she only looked that way because I wanted her to. Yeah, because this Serica, being back to being a delusion of Takurus, cannot act independently of him, unlike the Serica Noe that was real booted into existence. My ego and desire had created the role of a kind-hearted young girl that she was forever forced to play. The two of us were like that for a little while. I kept apologizing and Sarah seemed not to not want to hear it. Eventually she spoke to me like a mother scolding her child. Hmm. You know what? Part of me is actually uh, kind of wanting the uh, emotionless Serica back. At least that way it would uh, somewhat be a bit more real. Indeed you did. No, it wasn't a maybe. There had to be something. Something connected with me and the childhood wish. 
私は死んじゃったから聞くことはできないでしょ Serica was right. No, I was forcing her to be right. Of course, I knew what she would say next. Serica's voice became a light, the one thing that lit up my path in this dark world. Suddenly, I saw a scene I remembered well. Until a moment ago, the blackness had kept me from remembering, no matter how hard I tried to imagine them. Kurusu, Yui, Uki, and Yuto. Now I could see my family. I must have been getting ready for dinner. It smelled something good. I looked in the kitchen and saw a lineup of dishes fit for a nursing home. Yui, Uki, if you take cooking lessons from Nono, they're going to start calling you Mum and Granny at school. Yudo was in the corner, sulking because Yui had made fun of him. Yui was looking at him and laughing. Uki didn't know what to do. Nano gave Yui a brief scolding, but she was smiling when she did it. It was the same thing I'd seen a million times before. Nothing was different. And yet everything is different. Everyone was in the club room, going over the case. Hazuki, Ito, and... And I. We seem to be talking about Shibuya news. Kunisato has up had updated some information. Kazuki was playing her game. Ito went to stop her, but froze when she offered him a piece of dried squid. Arimoto told a stupid joke, and Ito blushed and started to shake his head frantically. There was still no expression on Kazuki's face. This was another scene I knew so well. But this world was never coming back. Indeed. Sakuma had destroyed it. Sore de Ino? Of course not. I love my family. I love my friends. Those places were the most precious things I had. He'd ruined them all, and when I'd asked him why, the only reason he could give me was that it was fun. I couldn't let him get away with that. No matter what I did, Yui and Nano weren't coming back. The life I'd had with my friends was gone. My feelings began to break free from the darkness and come to life again. Blood flew through my body once more, and my senses started to return to me. That's a good sign. That's right. I... Yeah. Apologies, Nono. Even if that meant breaking my promise to Nono. I didn't care what Sakuma was trying to accomplish with this experiment or what was happening to me. He wanted something from me. What was it? I didn't even want to know, but if we want to pursue the truth, we have to find out. He. I didn't care. I refused to go crazy like he wanted, even though we kind of already did. なんか、たこらしくないね。うるさいな。でも、感情だけで頑張っちゃうタクもちょっと見てみたいな。I <笑> smile back at her. And then I focused all my neurons on creating a delusion. 
where had I been? Who was I so angry at, and where were they standing? If I was in a prison of delusions created by that machine, I'd have to come up with a delusion that was even more powerful. And then I'd pull them into my own delusion. But is such a thing possible? The way I remembered it, it was like this. うん。うん、ちょっとわかるこなかった。天井から照明当たってるんでしょ。Closer, huh? How about this? Yeah, attention to detail. Very important. Serika walked around the stage, checking to see if there was anything I'd missed. She must have been satisfied because she nodded several times. Yeah, we're just gonna wing it, as usual. Serika pretended to be impressed with what I'd said. I laughed at myself too. Was I really the type of person who was brave enough to do something like this? We don't have a choice. We either do this or we don't. I used to think that risky decisions weren't courageous, but stupid. I used to think that courage was a word, just a word people use to hide their stupidity. Kind of like yourself, but... Oh, so da, Taku? わたしのかたきはとっちゃだめだよ。のんちゃんたちのかたきはとらなきゃだめ。でもわたしのかたきはだめ。あたりまいでしょ。いいから、とにかくその瞬間、タクが思っていいのは、ノンちゃんたちだけ。ね。And yet, even though you were the one that took Nano Kurusu's life, you were just as precious to Takuru Miyashiro as he was, Sarika Anoe. I'm sorry, and thanks. Those were the only words I could come up with. I didn't know what else I could say. Very well then. Who knows? Why did you come here? Sarah pouted a little. It was the same thing she used to do in the newspaper club. I tried to stop my tears from welling up again. Ah,ちゃんとしてるよ。この僕がちゃんとしてなかったことなんてあるか？Ah, plenty of times. えっとあの時とあの時それから。Yeah, and all the other times you weren't in control. She laughed. And then she looked right in my eyes. Maybe. 
Yeah. We only get one chance. That's right. I would only have a few seconds in the world of my delusion. And a few seconds when I got back to reality. I probably have less than five seconds in total. If he'd been researching Gigalomaniacs for as long as he said, he'd notice what I'd done immediately. But we need to take advantage of that extremely tiny window, so I'd only get one shot. If it didn't work, he'd kill me this time. Serica looked relieved when she saw my resolve. And then she smiled and started to fade away, as if her job was done. At the same time, I felt a stabbing pain in my head. It was the pain from when the D-Sword appeared. Here it comes. It's now or never. Okay. Very much so. Okay. Okay. It goes nothing. I slammed my own delusion down on top of the one that held me. Overlaying with two delusions. It was like splattering bright paint on a black canvas. In a single instant, a perfect replica of the theater appeared. Yes, it was working. Sakuma was in, in front of me. He looked surprised. Come to think of it, Takuru, you are the second person to be able to hijack somebody else's delusion. Make it count. I could tell from the shock on his face that he hadn't yet realized. That this was a world of delusion sitting on top of another delusion. And that I dragged him inside. It won't be long before he figures it out. The machine on his back started to creak and moan. Its shape was becoming warped and distorted, as if it was being crushed by an invisible giant. Yeah, let's finish this. I screamed louder as I tried to use my power to destroy it. Within the world of delusions, Sakuma stepped back as if to protect it, the look on his face making it clear that he still couldn't believe what was happening. But it was too late. Crush it. Crush. I hit him with a stronger delusion. The outer frame couldn't take the stress, and the machine started to break. Sakuma panicked and raised his D-Sword to use his mind control on me again. A 
red light flashed in front of me. But it wasn't the mind control again. It was the opposite. This was the key for the plan that the other Seroko and I had come up with. Sakama had made a mistake. He thought that I'd escaped from his mind control on my own. He thought that I'd escaped from that delusion and made it back to reality. So he did just what he hoped we, he would, and ended the mind control that was on me now. Even though I was still inside that dark prison. If Sakuma had stayed calm, he would have noticed his mistake immediately. But it was all so sudden that he panicked and made the wrong decision. That black torture chamber was gone. And in that instant, I cancelled my own delusion. The bonds that had tied me in place were gone. My senses came back and told me that this was reality. We're back in the real world. The pain of my injury, the smell of blood, the taste of blood, the feeling of my disord in my hand. Sakuma howling as he stood there with his fake sword raised high. But just getting back to reality wasn't good enough. I only had a few seconds, probably. I needed to destroy the real device before he figured out the trick. Run. I forced my aching body to move and ran at full speed toward my foe. I lowered my body and ran as I ran and held the D-sword ready. Our vision is red. A new attempt at mind control came at me. I could feel it trying to scramble my brain. But I wasn't stopping. I couldn't stop. We've come so far. We're so close. I bit down on my lip and used the pain to check my five senses. You're still okay. Don't stop. Run. Yeah, we need to see this through to the end. Keep running. <coughs> Using all that momentum. I swung the D-sword down at my... at Sakama. I slipped there again. <coughs> Sakuma tried to dodge it, but that was just what I wanted. He ducked low, and I could clearly see the device on his back, still crackling with that lightning. I slammed the D-sword down into it hard before he could move. Time to put an end to this. For real this time. Yep, its power source is gone, which means... <laughs> which means... Panting, I pulled my D-sword out of the device. Parts flew everywhere. The strange light it had been giving off disappeared and the artificial D-sword he was holding lost its shine. The pain created by his mind control attempts vanished like it was never there. As soon as I saw the device was destroyed, I'd fell to my knees. I'd used my power while running at full speed and it hurt to breathe. I was dizzy from lack of oxygen. Sakuma's mood suddenly began to change. 
he seemed to realize what I'd just done. The smile on his face vanished, and instead of anger, there was no expression at all. I never heard him use a tone like that before. Well, victory is ours, and all because we flipped a proverbial coin and called heads. <laughs> yeah, we won the coin toss. なんで生きてる。いや、なんで精神を保ってる。てめえがあれに耐えられるわけねえんだ。I used the D-Sword to support to help me to my feet. It was fine. I could move. And we're back in reality. I could move just the way I wanted to. I was sure of it. I'd made it back to the reality. Oi, Kotaro! Omae, nande ugokeren da yo? Easily. I readied the, the D-Sword again without saying a word. There was still no expression on Dad's Sakama's face. Why do I keep so falling into bad. that? He doesn't deserve that title, that vernacular. So you I looked down. Serika was lying at me, looking like she was asleep even though she was dead. Sakuma's anger vanished, and instead he started to speak like a scientist observing a guinea pig. I was even creepier somehow. Imaginary friend of the Norikita Tenuga. Korosta it in his cigarette tear, or Moragata. There's a lot of things you didn't see in your observations, Sakuma. Tag. Indeed. Sakuma raised the now dull D sword and came toward me. But without that machine, it was no longer an artificial D sword, but it was a still a gigantic metal blade. Even without his powers, it was more than capable of killing me. But that is an imitation. We have the real thing. I stepped away from him, my own weapon at the ready. I felt like if I looked away from him, I'd be killed. And yet, your D-sword can pretty much uh, slice through his one without any of it at all. The iron blade suddenly came down. There was an impact on my face. Probably should have blocked that. Definitely. Definitely should have blocked that. I felt some of my back teeth break and blood spurted from my mouth. I had been knocked onto the floor. I swung the D-sword in my hand frantically. For a moment, I experienced the pain and light that were caused by mind control. But that's just a sensation. Was that thing still working? It wasn't broken? It had to be. Yeah, we broke it, all right. Oh, wait. 
I dropped the D-sword in despair. It vanished. Well, now we're... Now the tables have turned yet again. But the mind control never came. My attack a moment ago had damaged it. <laughs> yes, it is. Down comes the other blade. <laughs> Sakuma's iron sword struck me on the left leg. An indescribably awful pain ran up my spine and smashed into my brain. Well... Things were looking so good for us when we broke out of his delusionary t chamber. But sadly, uh, it looks as though Takuru's momentum uh, has ultimately not carried him through to seize the day. So when we return, Ventures once again posed with the simple question, how the hell are we going to turn the tables on Wataru Sakama? As he glares down on us with that giant metal blade. As always, adventurers, until next we meet.